Our investment car silver rings are back from the foundry and they're looking pretty good. If you followed this series from the very beginning, we started by modeling some rings in Onshape and then using Mesh Mixer to modify them. We then 3D printed them on the One How Duplicator 7 in blue cast resin and sent them off to the local foundry to be cast. Well, they're back, so that means this is the final installment in the series. How did they turn out? Let's have a closer look. Here is the first ring, which we call the revolved ring. You can see a big old chunky sprue there, which we'll explain later. If we flip the ring around to the underside, we'll see where there's marks left behind from where the support posts were touching. Every little detail is being captured here. The geometric ring feels really heavy and solid. Unfortunately, all of the layer lines have transferred into the casting. We can print at reduced layer height, but what we really should have done is done some more post-processing before we send it off. Next up is the extruded ring, which is looking pretty good. We knew the layer lines would show here, but they're also on the outside on a flat surface, which means they're easy to remove. The coral ring is definitely still my favorite. There's enough going on with the geometry that it hides some of the imperfections. I think this one's gonna turn out really great. You'll notice that because it's got a lot of thin sections, there's two sprues attached. Next up is a USB pendant selected by my patron, Hamish. It turned out pretty damn good. There's not much wrong with it at all. Finally, we have the heartbreak of the Yoda. It was just too small and delicate for them to be able to cast. It looks like they tried to do it, but something must have collapsed and as they injected the silver, it broke up and it was destroyed. I asked them to send it to me anyway, and even this half is still a pretty cool thing to look at. So I've just mentioned the word sprue over and over. You might be wondering, what is a sprue? Well, to help you out, I've prepared an animation on just how investment casting works. Let's check it out. To start with, we have our 3D printed ring and we call this a pattern. The aim is to cast a material like plaster called investment around it, so then we can melt it out and pour in silver in its place. Only one problem, it's sealed on the inside. Therefore, we have to add our sprue. The sprue opens up the internal mold cavity to the outside so we can continue with the process. The next stage required is called the burnout. They turn the mold upside down, they put it in a big furnace, heat it up to a controlled temperature, and eventually all of the pattern melts out, leaving the internal cavity empty. Finally, the mold is ready and the silver is poured in the top. It solidifies and after this, the heartbreaking part happens because you have to break the mold. It's a one-time use only, hence the word investment. There's a lot of steps in that process. So to make it more efficient and profitable for a casting company, they do it on what's called a tree. They have many, many designs all attached in a central pillar and they cast them all at the same time. There's only so much my animations can do this process justice. So what I've done is linked a video in the description below of a company that does this thing from 3D printing through to casting. It'll give you a much greater understanding of how the process works. Now that we understand why the sprue is there, let's get to the hard work of removing it and polishing the rings. You will be praying that the casting company chooses to put all of the sprues on the outside of the jewelry, because this means you can use something big and flat like a disc sander and you can take it off very quickly. The main safety concern here is actually the heat generated. The friction from the disc sander gets it really hot really fast. However, wearing thick gloves means you might not be able to hold it with enough dexterity. You just have to be patient and let it cool down from time to time until the job is done. I was actually pretty lucky here that three out of the five designs that I was cleaning up had the sprue on the outside. This meant that I could use the disc sander to not remove all of it, because as you'll see, there's still work to come, but to do the bulk of the work. It saves heaps of time if you can do it this way. Two of the rings had the sprue completely on the inside, which is a bit of a nightmare. The first thing I tried was using a Dremel set to 30,000 RPM and a grinding bit. It did not work very well at all. The USB pendant had the sprue on the outside, but not in a place where I could disc sand. Why is it that when you're grinding a sprue, it seems to take forever, but as soon as you slip, it leaves gashes instantly. Just more work to do later. Another option for removing the internal sprues is to use a round file. Not much faster here. Finally, I found the right tool for the job. This thing is called a point saw and it has an extremely narrow blade. It's very delicate, so if you go too fast and put too much tension on the blade, snap city. If you take your time and you're gentle on the blade, however, you'll find this humble little tool is by far the fastest way to cut through the sprue. You still do need the Dremel afterwards, however, to clean up the remains of the sprue. At least this time, it's a lot faster and less frustrating. Power tools can be pretty good, but never underestimate the simple tools too. This is simply some sandpaper glued down to a flat board. Like any other sanding, you start with the roughest grade, which means the lowest number, and then you move down into the grade smoother and smoother until you reach your desired finish. Here I was impatient, so I stopped at P600, but really you can go up to P1200 or even 2400. 
Time for the metal buffing machine. The rings will get hot so I recommend wearing a glove and putting it on a piece of wooden dowel like you see here. A nice tip is that if you apply pressure with your thumb that's inside the glove, you'll stop the ring from spinning on the wooden dowel and cutting your skin. Now you just keep on buffing until you run out of patience. Now the amount of time you're willing to spend sanding and polishing the rings is directly proportional to the surface finish you'll end up with. I have to admit that personally, I don't have much patience for things like that. So the way you see them in the video coming up is just how they're gonna have to stay. If you do have the patience and like to spend the time on fine finishing, you will be able to get these rings to a mirror polish, just like jewelry from the store. Anyway, that's enough excuses, let's check out how they look. So here's the final result with a fair amount of sanding and polishing. The coral ring created in Mesh Mixer is still my favorite. We could do with a little bit more polishing on the top surfaces, but apart from that, it looks pretty cool. This geometric ring, I couldn't get rid of the ley lines on the inside, but the rest I put on a nice brushed effect. Look at the way it catches the light here. Really, really nice. This one is the heaviest and therefore feels really nice on your hand. The revolve ring was never really to my taste. Therefore, I've spent the least amount of time and effort trying to clean it up. This means that you can still see all the little imperfections and layer lines from the 3D printing captured perfectly in the casting. This USB shaped pendant turned out pretty damn near perfect. The only artifacts are around where the sprue was cut off. It wouldn't be too hard to get rid of those completely. Finally, the extruded ring, which is my second favorite. I really love all the little details on the inside of the band and the brush finish I've given it here makes it nice and masculine. Another nice touch is the way it's hollow through the body and if you hold it up to the light, it shines through. Here are all of the pieces sitting together for the last time. It was my first go and a lot of this was new, so overall I'm pretty happy. Yes, I could have spent more time cleaning them up and polishing them, but overall I'm still very pleased. Now a reminder that the USB pendant design was picked off Thingiverse by one of my patrons, Hamish. So now I'll be sending that off for him to keep. Well that wraps up the series, so thanks so much for watching. If you think you'd like to attempt this project, go back and watch the series from the beginning. I think this project has proven that the cheap D7 printer as well as blue cast resin is a great option for making your own jewelry at home. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.